What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Eustar Gem 12. Now this definitely has some tricks up its sleeve, and by the end we're going to turn this into a full-fledged 1440p gaming powerhouse. But recently on the channel we took a look at Eustar's Gem 10. This turned out to be a great little mini PC, it's powered by a Ryzen 7000 series APU, and it's coming in a lot smaller than the Gem 12, but with the new Gem 12 we get some more power here because this is actually using the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. So we've got a brand new 8000 series APU here for the Gem 12, and keep in mind this is not the pro model of the Gem 12, that one actually has a built in LCD screen up top, it's just a little screen, kind of give you some information on what's going on. This is the non-pro model, but we still get all of the other great features. Plus, AUSTAR's new gym line of mini PCs supports Oculink up front, so we can easily connect a really powerful GPU. In this video, we've got quite a lot to cover, but before we move any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows. Windows keys. Right now their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. As you can see I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated, so I'm going to change product key, I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Inside of the box, along with the Gem 12, we're going to get our 120 watt power supply, and they have opted to use USB-C here. This is not a PD charger, it's actually a 19 volt USB Type-C, specifically designed to power this mini PC. It's got a mounting system, HDMI cable, also have some extra rubber feet here in case we need to get in here, change out the SSD or add some more storage, plus some heat sinks for your new M.2 SSD. When it comes to I.O. on the new Gem 12, up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, USB 4, and this is a 40 gig port here, and we've got our Oculink interface right here. If you're not familiar with Oculink, basically what we've got here is a connector that'll do up to 64 gigs a sec as opposed to USB 4s or Thunderbolt 4s 40. And when connecting an eGPU over Oculink, in my experience, I've just had much faster speeds and a more stable connection. We will be testing a pretty powerful GPU on this mini PC by the end. But moving around back, we've got our other USB 4 port, and this is also going to dub as our power input, which is a little odd, kind of wish they would have added an extra USB here specifically for power in. We've also got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size DisplayPort, and two USB ports. Taking a look at the internals, it's actually really easy to get in here. And up top, we've got a pretty large fan here to help cool off that NVMe SSD, or dual NVMe SSDs if you want to add an extra one. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600. We've got two M.2 slots in here, both of them will accept a PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD, 2280 size. And the screws for that bottom plate are underneath the rubber feet, but they weren't even on it. They actually send you two extra pairs in the box, which is something I haven't seen in the past. I usually have to tear them off, sometimes they just don't stick back on correctly, so I'm actually really glad to see this. When it comes to the specs of the AOSTAR Gem 12, for the APU we've got the new AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8GHz and a boost up to 5.1. And with this, we get the Radeon 780M RTNA3 iGPU. This will clock up to 2700 MHz. And since we've got Ryzen 8000, we do have AMD Ryzen AI. It's a new NPU and it'll do up to 16 tops of AI performance. This unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM, but it will do up to 64 SODIMM 5600 MHz. Two M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD drives can be added. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro. Of course, one of the big selling points for a little mini PC like this, for a lot of people looking into this, would be that Oculink port, and we will test it by the end of the video, but I wanted to get some testing out of the way on the unit just like it is, without an external GPU, so that's what we're going to move over to first, then we're going to connect a pretty beefy GPU to this little PC. 
All right, so I've been doing a little bit of testing with this PC and that 8845HS does handle basically everything that I've thrown at it pretty well. But of course, we've got that Oculink port and later on in the video, we will be adding a pretty powerful GPU here. I just kind of wanted to get the base unit out of the way. So as you can see, 8845HS, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600 and the built-in Radeon 780M iGPU. On its own, does a really good job and just using this as a basic desktop is going to work out really well. 4K video playback, web browsing, email checking, photo editing, and even video editing on this system with the iGPU is totally possible. I mean, it's a very capable system like it is. And one of the first things I always like to do is just check out the total TDP that this little APU is running at. I've got core temp. We're going to go ahead and run a stress test. So I've been seeing this thing jump up to 64, 65 watts, and then come on down to 54 after a little while. Built-in cooler here is actually really nice. It's not a loud cooler at all. It's a pretty quiet little system. And of course, throwing some more wattage at it for a longer period of time, we could get this up or make it a bit louder to keep it nice and chilly. But I haven't hit thermal throttle with it at all. Put a load on this iGPU just to make sure. And yeah, across the board, we're looking at a 54 watt TDP all the way through. Now we've got that boost up to 65, which will help out in some cases. And you could use a third party app to get it up there all the time, but we're going to test it just like this. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some benchmarks. Then we're going to jump into some gaming with this 780MI GPU. Then we'll move on to some Oculink eGPU testing and really bring that GPU performance up on this little machine. Here's Geekbench 6, and at a 54 watt TDP, we're seeing some really great scores here. Single core, 2,406. Multi, 12,796. For a little mobile chip, this is doing great. I also ran a couple 3D Mark tests. We've got Firestrike with a 7,637. And finally, Time Spy with a 3,211. For an iGPU, these scores are looking great, especially given the fact that we can only take the RAM speed up to 5600 megahertz on this unit. Fallen right in line with some other PCs that have tested with this similar chip. And now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. We've got Fortnite, 1080p, medium settings, and there's no scaling whatsoever going on. I actually wanted to turn that off and that's one of the big things with these iGPUs. I've always left it on. I usually get an average of around 68. But with that totally disabled, we're looking at an average of around 89 FPS. Fallout 4 has been getting a lot of attention lately due to the show hitting Amazon. And yeah, I mean, I love this game. Went back to it here on this iGPU. 1080p, medium settings, getting an average of around 65 FPS. But when there's a lot of particle effects on screen, sometimes it will dip on down. And you'll see that with the explosions going on. Now, taking a few of those settings down really does help out, but it is a playable experience. Borderlands 3, 1080p with a medium low mix. I've been messing around with this game quite a bit recently on these iGPUs and you can definitely get some really good performance out of it. With these settings I'm using right now, we're seeing an average of around 90 FPS. And the final one I wanted to test here on the iGPU was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Using the built-in benchmark, balance preset, FSR set to balance, we got an average of 102 FPS out of this game. I've actually had really good luck on iGPUs with this due to all of the settings that we can change. It does support FSR 1.0 and 3.0, plus all the way in between DLSS and XESS. So obviously with this mini PC all by itself and that iGPU, we can get some really awesome gaming out of the way, but there's a lot more that we can do with this because we've got that Oculink port, which is gonna allow us to easily add an external Oculink eGPU. And there are some really great pre-made Oculink slash USB 4 eGPUs on the market right now, mainly from uh, GPD with the G1. We've also got the 1X GPU. Both of them use the same RX 7600 MXT, but I wanted a little more out of this. And a while ago, I made a video on making your own low cost Oculink eGPU from parts on Amazon and even parts you might have laying around. For this setup, we're gonna go with something a bit more powerful than that RX 7600M. I went with an RTX 4070 Ti Super. It definitely doesn't look as good, but the dock itself was much cheaper and you could add basically any GPU you wanted here. I just went with this to see what kind of performance we could get out of it. And so far it's looking like everything's connected properly. All I'm really gonna need to do here is actually install the drivers for Nvidia and we'll see what this thing can do. So now instead of using that Radeon 780M, we've got this RTX 4070 Ti super connected. And I wanted to go with this custom dock here because I haven't used it in a while. As you can see, still got that 8845HS, 
32 gigs of DDR5. And this thing is definitely pulling some power. If I head over to Furmark real quick, and this is just rendering at 1080p right now, the GPU itself is pulling 280 watts. That power supply's got more than enough for it, but yeah, I mean, it's not a low power consumption unit anymore. Either way, we're working with a lot more GPU power here. Going from that iGPU over to something like this will really up that performance, but we're not gonna get the maximum out of this card because we're running over Oculink. Now, instead of running at PCIe X16 here, you know, 4.0, we're actually running at PCIe X4 4.0. So yeah, I mean, we've cut down a lot on this RTX 4070 Ti Super but it's still gonna give us a lot more power than that iGPU can. And the first thing I wanted to get back into were benchmarks with this card connected. And the performance jump here is absolutely ridiculous. With Fire Strike and that RTX 4070 Ti Super connected over Oculing, total score here, 38,922. And just to give you a recap on the iGPU, we scored a 7,637. I mean, this is pretty amazing. I also ran Fire Strike, total score here with that RTX 4070 connected, 20,561. And again, wanted to give you a look at the score with just the iGPU. We had only scored a 3,211. Now I know that these are synthetic benchmarks, but I think a lot of this will transfer over to some real world performance. So let's check it out now. Moving back to Fallout 4, on the iGPU, we could actually run this pretty well at 1080 medium settings. Had a couple dips under 60, but right now with the RTX 4070 Ti Super connected over Oculing, we can totally max this out. So we're at very high or ultra settings here, 4K, running at a constant 60. Helldivers 2 was another one I wanted to test here. We're at 1440p, ultra settings, no DLSS. I've got all scaling technologies turned off. So we're at a true 1440p, getting 103 FPS out of this little machine. Now we could get much more with some DLSS. I'm pretty sure at balance, we could hit around 150 FPS with this setup. Horizon Forbidden West Ultra with DLSS set to quality. I probably should have turned it to balance. Now that bandwidth not being at maximum capacity with this 4070 connected over Oculink really does show with a game like this. Got a few close encounters to go in under 60, but it never dipped that low. Either way, by the end, we had an average of 78 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at ultra 1440p, getting an average of around 83 FPS out of this. First impressions here for the new AU Star Gem 12. I do like the overall look of it. Built in heatsink here is great at 54 watts, and even with that boost up to 64, I didn't even hit 83 degrees Celsius, and thermal throttle on these little chips is around 95, so we're good there, even at 65 watts full out. Pretty quiet little system, doesn't spin up like a jet plane, even at those higher TDPs, stressing this thing out with AAA gaming. And you know, by itself, it'll game, but then we've always got that Oculink port up front and we can add something like this. Now, of course, not everybody's gonna go out and add an RTX 4070, but even something like an RTX 4060 with a cheaper dock would really up the GPU performance on a mini PC like this. I will have at least one more video coming up with the AO Star Gem 12, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, be it on the iGPU or even a different external Oculink eGPU, let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Gem 12, I'll leave some links down below. You can pick this up on Amazon or their official website. Their official website is cheaper than Amazon, but might take a little while to get it shipped that way. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.